0.01 moles of calcium is burned in a calorimeter. And so when we hear that, um, that should help guide us in the types of uh, questions that we're, we're looking at here. And it says the uh, heat capacity, C-Cal, so this is important to know to figure out what equation we use, is 0 0.200 kilojoules per degree Celsius. And the temperature change by 31.5 degrees Celsius. What is the heat of combustion? What is the heat of combustion per mole of calcium? So we want to end up with kilojoules per mole, given the information that we have. So if you guys look in the back of chapter five, you'll find all those equations. And here you'll find that variable that's in this equation here. So we're going to use uh, this equation first to determine the uh, heat for the reaction. So negative 0 0.200 kilojoules per degree Celsius times a change in temperature of 31.5 degrees Celsius. Degrees Celsius disappear and we're left with kilojoules. This gives us a value of 6.3 kilojoules. But our answer needs to be in kilojoules per mole. And we're told that we have 0 0.01 moles. So to get to, from kilojoules to kilojoules per mole, we just divide those values by each other. And so we just take 0 0.01 moles. And this will give us a value of negative 630 kilojoules per mole. Okay, number six says the standard enthalpy of combustion is negative 220 uh, kilojoules per mole. And if only half of that uh, heat is obtained from a complete combustion of a certain quantity of propane, how many moles of CO2 are produced? So to approach this problem, we want to say if this is how much energy uh, is actually obtained from the react from the actual reaction, and we know that for every mole of propane we burn or we can produce that many moles or that many kilojoules, how many molecules of CO2 will be moles of CO2 are produced. So we look at the balanced equation and if it's this amount of energy per one mole of propane. But for every one mole of propane combusted, it produces three moles of CO2. So we use that proportion and that there's three times as many CO2 molecules as there are propane. When we run the numbers here, we get one and a half moles. Okay, number seven, the final products uh, from the metabolism of nutrients containing carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen are, all right, so uh, maybe you remember back to biology and cellular respiration. So I just ate lunch, and essentially our food, even though it's made out of different macronutrients, really comes down to our body wants glucose. And so our body reacts glucose with oxygen 
to produce carbon dioxide and H2O. So that's where all of our carbon dioxide and water vapor comes from our breath. So every time we eat food, we process that food and produce carbon dioxide and H2O, just like a combustion reaction. Uh, in terms of food calories, like number eight, fat has the highest with nine kilocalories. Remember, food calories are kilocalories. Sorry, it's a G. Nine kilocalories per gram. Carbs and fats both have the same energy content, even though our body might break them down at different rates, which makes, for instance, proteins probably more healthy to eat than a lot of carbs because it takes longer to release that energy. So we don't get these big rushes uh, of sugar and energy that can lead us to crash. So our answer here is fats. S orbitals have a spherical shape. So if we tie this to quantum numbers, we have N is the quantum number, and then uh, if N equals three, uh, L can be any number one less than that. So we can have L equals two, L equals one, and L equals zero. And these numbers are essentially code for telling us the shapes of the orbitals. So L equals two is always going to be a uh, D orbital. So this would be like the, th if for N equals three, you can have a 3D sublevel, you can have a 3P sublevel, and you can have a 3S. And so S is a sphere, P is a dumbbell, D was a clover, and F is like a much more complicated shape. So how many orbitals are there when n equals 2? So we have quantum numbers. We have n, l, and to figure out the number of orbitals, we're going to count the total numbers uh, for ml. So for n equals 2, l can equal 1, and l can equal 0. The magnetic quantum number is the range of l. So for l equals 1, ml can equal negative 1, 0, and positive 1. Each one of those numbers is just a placeholder for an orbital. So for l equals 1, there's three orbitals. For l equals 0, there's one. So if we add these all up, there's one, two, three, four orbitals for n equals two. We're sitting for time here. We get one more done. All right, so for a microwave oven that emits electromagnetic radiation with a wavelength of 0.122 meters what is the frequency so we're going to use the speed of light equation so if we multiply the frequency times the wavelength of any uh, electromagnetic radiation we always get the speed of light and we want to find the frequency so we're going to rearrange this equation to be the speed of light divided by the wavelength And so this gives us an answer in hertz, which is 2.45 times 10 to the 9th hertz. Well, that doesn't really match up with any of our answers here. Because it's not going to be this. It's not to the negative 10. It's not this one. So we got to figure out, uh, well, let's figure out why it, it is letter C here. So mega is 10 to the 6th. That's what the capital M is. And so our value is to 10 to the 9th. And so 
if we converted this, we would find that we get 2450 megahertz. And you would do that by seeing that there's one times 10 to the sixth hertz in one megahertz. I'll give you this value here.